I mean, this really was rare. You got to sit down with all the executive team, really, the, the president and indeed um, the two co-founders. Tell us what you learned, because this has been quite the silent unicorn almost of the Silicon Valley. Yeah, you know, contrasting with what we think of as a disruptive Silicon Valley founder, this sort of, you know, sometimes even brash or, or uh, even a little bit overbearing, these guys are nice. <laughs> they're, they're just incredibly, like, you know, slow and steady and thoughtful. Um, not to say that the business is moving slowly. In fact, behind the scenes, they've done quite a lot to update their product. But not, of it, not a lot of it is stuff that we see on the surface, sort of the flashy product updates that we get from these social media companies. It's more with the algorithm. They want you to think of them as a search company, surfacing mm -hmm. ideas that can help you plan your life. So more of a Google than an Instagram. Uh, David, wing a question now to Sarah, because I'm sure you're interested in the subject. Well, I mean, I have to say, I, I was listening to the podcast, and, you know, there is a sort of modesty that almost comes across as a modesty of ambition there. So, Sarah, I mean, when you think about it, and they're saying they want to be sort of a Google of imagery or whatever, does that really make sense to you? Do you really think they're going to get there? Are they going to retain their multi-billion dollar valuation that, that they've been celebrated for? I think that they have threats coming up from all sides. I mean, Google just announced that soon you'll be able to see shoppable images in their image search. That is especially Pinteresty. Uh, Instagram just announced that you'll be able to save posts that inspire you in collections. That sounds a lot like Pinterest. So, you know, you you focus on social media for much of your career too, David. This this is a, a rule of the network, right? The larger network sometimes wins. And the biggest threat to Pinterest right now is that they have 175 million users. That's a healthy amount, but it's not the 600 million of Instagram or you know the whole world using Google. It is it is a threat. Sarah, I, I listened to the decrypted podcast this morning, as I was in the gym, and loved, you know, the, what you drew out in particular from some of these executives, and actually what they refuse to sort of tell you. It doesn't look like it's quite got the stellar growth that we're expecting of many a startup unicorn-based company. They didn't want to say that growth was as fast as this time last year. Right. Uh, they wouldn't answer questions about that as much, and they also wouldn't talk about their eventual IPO. <laughs> you know, they said, oh, you know, we, we have no plans. And I said, okay, well, are you talking about it? And they're like, well, we, we can't say whether we're talking about it, but we have no plans. And so, but if you look at, behind, at the little pieces that are coming together, I mean, they're hiring a very senior executive team. They're trying to sort of clean up their vision. This whole advertising campaign, you know, even opening up their executives to talk to a reporter like me, all of these things are things you need to do in order to prepare for that eventual public offering. And certainly he confirmed that they wanted to remain Certainly independent. independent. It wasn't like they were looking for a sale in any way. Sarah, I really enjoyed the podcast. I have to say, Decrypted is where it's at when you want to get these sort of insights. I'm just going to ask David, what's your view, therefore, on whether we'll be seeing a Pinterest IPO anytime soon or at that sort of lofty valuation? I don't know. I think probably the valuation would be the challenge they have with an IPO anytime soon. I will say, among particularly younger women I know, the loyalty, brand loyalty to Pinterest is very, very real, at least in the United States. So I think they have a strong business. The thing that surprised me most about Sarah's uh, co commentary and, and interviews with them was when they explicitly said they're not a social network. Really surprising.